So I know things have been looking a little bit quieter since Halloween rolled away. Halloween obviously being reasonably substantial, reintroducing Reaper's Rumble, the Roller Beetles rating. We had the big rune update lately, but there is some more news as well that I wanted to let you guys uh, know about, be aware of. Some of it's gem store related, which usually, yes, I uh, shy away from, but there's been an interesting new innovation, shall we say. And also, uh, the most recent release with the big rune overhaul introduced a new map to pvp you remember the 2v2 map well with that was another very cool announcement i think you guys should be aware of to do with special tournaments which have finally become a thing uh, there's also some sales. So let's jump on in, starting off with what you see in the title and to do with the gem store. Befriend a new pet dog. Yeah, check it out on screen here. Uh, the devs threw up a blog post. The pet dog whistle, a Basenji, has been added to the game. So uh, a little bit back now, we obviously had the novelties introduced, which added proper infrastructure for toys. And well, now that the devs have got that, we've seen they've been playing with it a lot. We've, of course, seen that they've been adding new chairs, such as the Desert King one they just released and is way better and cooler than the raid one. But also, you can see they're playing with the toy category of novelties too. And uh, opening up here with the pet dog whistle. Here's what the blog post says. Yes, you can have a dog, but you have to promise to play with it, train it, and feed it. A dog is a big responsibility, but if you spend time with it every day, it will learn how to correctly perform the tricks you teach it and learn new ones too. This novelty whistle will summon a clever Cornan Basenji to keep you company. So in the footage here, you can see my first experiences with this. It's a peculiar type of thing to add to the game since minis already exist. Uh, and, you know, minis are often sold on the gem store. We saw that they played with minis in interesting ways, too, with, like, the pet rock way back when and the uh, chest, I think it was. The mini Black Line Trading Company chest had, like, a small quest associated with it. Well, here they've added a super mini. And it's a small dog that runs around with you, properly gets summoned like, say, some of the outfits in the game would summon a feline familiar or whatever. It gets your guild tag, for example. You can see my pet dog is a member of the Spud crew. Uh, but also, while the dog's out, it changes your skill bar to these whistle abilities that, yeah, lets you train it. Now, the idea is it's kind of a time gate mechanic. Basically, you hang out and you do things with the dog today. And then it will learn a certain amount of things. Then tomorrow you can train it a bit more. The day after you can train it a bit more. You see as I mouse over many of these skills, it says uh, that these tricks are unavailable. It hides what the tricks eventually will be. Uh, and I guess that's the excitement of the, uh, the toy. That eventually you'll get this full bar. It's pretty well done actually. They added voices, voice acting for it. Which obviously changes based on your gender and your race. So there's quite a lot of lines they did. Since it comes from the player character. Uh, and so far on day one. That you're looking at. I can do here. I can feed it. Uh, and I can play fetch with it. By the time I taught it how to play fetch. My Basenji was done for the day. And in fact, one of the skills on your skill bar represents just how much it's learnt it's within this 24 uh, hour period and if it's too fatigued to go on. So, some creative use of the skill bar and whatnot. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't somehow key this into the mini system. Uh, because, And you guys might be thinking, well, it's not a mini WP, it's just a full-on dog. That's true, but some minis aren't even called minis. They're just, hey, this is a puppy, right? Like, you can have all those uh, baby versions of various animals they did way back when the game first came out. And, uh, you know, those, those boundaries aren't exactly very hard. And I guess if this sells really well, the devs will uh, keep going with it. I also find it funny to see that a random item on the gem store like this has enough budget allocation to get player character voice acting on it, while the current events team doing stuff, you know, like the Shadow Stone way back and whatnot, they don't get any of that. You know, there's no voice acting available at all. Uh, but hey, the blog post also, if you look here, does talk about some other stuff. Uh, which I'll leave a link to in the description if you guys are interested in in terms of you know the new outfits and things But this is pretty interesting here for sales Obviously, it's Black Friday and whatnot. So the devs are playing with this quite a lot uh, Living World Season 2 Complete Pack and Season 3 Complete Pack are on sale. It doesn't say by how much, 
But listen, if you're a newish player and you're watching this and you don't have those complete seasons, this is the time to get them. Most people wait and wait and wait until the complete packs go on sale and now you can probably pick them up. So if you're thinking of getting someone newly into Guild Wars 2 as well, right now is a really good time because you can get the games themselves and then the complete packs. You buy these two and you have everything. None of that annoying nonsense where some stuff's locked off and some stuff isn't and you wonder whether you're going to grind for gold to get the gems to unlock the things and you're going to play the story out of order and you can't get rid of mastery pop-ups because you didn't play season two even though you're a core account and all that stuff uh, at least for now it's as cheap as it will be i'll also note that the digital deluxe versions of hot and pof are on sale and in a totally separate blog post here dedicated to black friday stuff here's the big one black friday deals 50 percent off guild wars 2 path of fire and classic games so heart of thorns isn't half price but everything else is on sale, all right? Core Guild Wars 2 with Path of Fire is 50% off. The Living World bundles are on sale. Everything's on sale except HOT on its own. Even the Guild Wars 1 games are on sale. And I love talking about this. Last time we saw these were on sale was, I believe, when the devs reinvigorated the community quite largely and gave us those graphics updates and so on. Uh, that's through Steam, right? So I'm just going to skip down to here. You guys can pause if you really want to see the specifics of the sale. But uh, you can travel back to Tyria's past with classic Guild Wars games from November 21st to the 27th. Um, so the period that this video is up, uh, they're all half price on Steam. You can do that for your Hall of Monuments and whatnot. And yeah, I'm really happy with that. So good time to be a Guild Wars fan or get someone newly into the franchise as a Guild Wars fan. You could technically get like everything for really low price right now. All the classic games, uh, the only thing you'd be paying a, a regular price for, I guess, is Heart of Thorns, right? Or did they say on that other post that that's a uh, low uh, price as well? Anyway, so there you go. Black Friday, that's basically what the devs are doing for it. Let's talk about the other big thing that's in the title and what I'm really excited about on this video to deal with you guys. That's the PvP tournament. So check this out. Player versus player 2v2 is coming soon. Now, it's kind of a big story with 2v2. It's something the devs are tentatively looking at, as far as I can tell, as maybe the... Uh, more interesting future of competitive play as far as Heart of the Mist and all of its infrastructure goes for uh, PvP. They're obviously not abandoning Conquest and they're not abandoning anything else they've done like say Stronghold or whatnot. That stuff's all going to be available and that's what rank queuing is going to be and so on. But as far as tournaments are concerned, there's a lot of players who have expressed an interest in 2v2. There have been community round 2v2s for Christ knows how long now. The game isn't really designed or super well balanced as a 2v2 experience in my opinion. And I don't know how much legs this format really has. But it's a shake up. It's something different. And there are now two maps that support 2v2. You've got Hall of the Mist and the Asuran Arena. So uh, with all of that, the devs are also looking at special tournaments. Let's go in game and I'll show you guys what this looks like here. Special tournaments being another kind of thing for PvP that's been talked about a long time but hasn't you know arrived so you've got pvp you've got your various tabs right so you've got the top tab for queuing and whatnot and your various stats you've got your progression through the league you've got your award tracks game browser and then there's tournament this is the tab that most of you watching this video i'm sure don't really know about or look at very often um, and here, it's always been called tournaments and special events. But this second one here, this special events, these have never actually existed. All right. Uh, so tournaments, there are three per day. They're conquest based. So Grant's game is a tournament for conquest. And if you win, you get qualifying points. If you're not on the time zone where Grant's game will be available because you're at work in four hours or whatever, there's one... Uh, a little bit later in Melandry's matchup and another one for Lissa's Legion. So they try and hit OCX, EU and North America. Everyone really has their opportunity. Everybody's gathering uh, qualifying po points throughout the month uh, as they play these tournaments. And then they those can be spent and obviously other gold, you know, 25 gold for winning to each player. So that's five players getting 25 gold at the end of the tournament each time um dies and mystic coins then lastly you've got at the end of the month cormier's clash where you can only enroll if you have the qualifying points this only happens once a month and this is where like all the obscene rewards are okay gizmos Huge amounts of gold, 500 gold, 100 mystic coins straight to people, access to the exclusive area, the gold llama, 
uh, which, you know, very few players in the entire game have. Uh, this, Cormier's Clash is really the big thing, and every month that comes around, if you're at all into PvP, you'll know about this, and hopefully you should watch uh, the cast of it and the streams and, and the stuff as it goes along. Uh, the, the, this happens simultaneously on EU and NA, by the way, so whenever Cormier's Clash comes up, it's kind of doubled for both regions. So anyway, that's everything. That's tournaments. That's all that's existed until today. This special events thing has now become a thing, because we can now scroll down, and you'll see, so each tournament was named after the gods. Grenz Game, Melange's Mansion, Lisa is it one god was never here before all right duena and check it out duena's duos has been added this is totally fresh for the game uh and so what you can see here is in four days this all begins uh and you'll see that they are automated tournaments but special events that are only going to be for this period going back to the blog post the devs explained that it's from november 26 to december 1st uh, and what they're going to be is daily 2v2 tournaments that trigger four times a day. And they're offset from the regular tourneys. So to come back, you can participate in all of these and Duena's duo won't overlap with them. But four times a day, Duena, Duena's duo will come up. And when you queue into this, I guess it will put you into the Asuran Arena and Hall of the Mists, I guess. I don't know which maps are actually available here. The prizes are slightly different. Uh, 2v2s will roll a bit quicker. So if you join one of these tourneys just for participating, you're going to get some PvP rewards. Uh, depending on how many players go for this, and it's a new initiative, so you'd expect a lot of the community will try it out. Uh, you know, if you get 9th to 16th, you get 5 gold. It rolls up to a maximum of 25 gold and these, all right? But uh, you've got these that are rolling. They're kind of like your your regular ones. Then a bit later, there'll be the big event at the end. Duena's duos will conclude with one final big tournament. Just like Cormier's Clash at the end of the month, there'll be essentially a 2v2 monthly. And so uh, it doesn't have a different name. It's just called Duena's duos again. But this is where things get really exciting. You get large potions of PvP rewards, lots of gold. Let's assume you win, okay? You're not going to get a gizmo for a win here. But you still get the massive amounts of money. It basically means if you're a good PvPer this month, you can easily net yourself well over a thousand gold, right? Tons of mystic coins. But then the really special thing, uh, number one, you get a, a unique title. Only two, four players in all of Guild Wars 2 are going to get this. Because two players on EU, two players on NA. The duo of destiny, all right? So a legendary title to be able to get for yourself. And then this is quite interesting. It's an Ascended Champions Rest Pass. So going back to the regular tourneys we've always had. For winning the monthly, the most ultimate thing, you would only get two weeks of... A well, four weeks of access to Champions Rest. That's like the special area, the exclusive area in Heart of the Mist, which less people are enthusiastic about than I am. I kind of like. But this is only ever going to last you two weeks after you activate it, right? And that was the best that was available before. However, if you win the duos, you get an Ascended one which is permanent access to it, which the devs hadn't done before. So, uh, and this will come and this will go and you won't be able to get it again, I guess, unless maybe they really like the format. So it's going to be really curious. I guess people will be streaming on Twitch. I don't know whether I'm going to participate or stream it or what exactly I'll do with it. But as far as PvP is concerned, I think this is great. Two new maps coming in, one for Conquest, one for a potential new game type that people might really like. Special tournaments coming in. This is great. One of the other things that the devs have been talking about they wanted to do for this panel and this, this format of the game is Swiss style stuff. But I think that's kind of in development hell at the moment and we'll see when they eventually get that. So, uh, yeah, Duena's duos introduced. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of some big news for those of you who play there. And I'll reiterate, every time I find myself talking about this on the main channel, I'm always met with so much cynicism and people who feel like they, they can't play PvP or they don't know it. It's never too late to get in and try. Trust me, there's lots of opportunity. You might not come first, obviously, but there's lots of opportunity to... If you come fifth to eighth, you're still netting 100 golds. And there's plenty of time to practice and get good just in the duos. Don't forget, hot joins are there. So you could just join the 2v2 hot joins and get your practice on. Uh, maybe I'll even dedicate a stream or something to it and we'll get a community flushed in there. Should be fun. So there you go, guys. Uh, a little bit of news. That's what's going on between Halloween and whatever the next big thing is. I'm hoping that by next Tuesday we'll see some cool news. Uh, and yeah, just to keep you guys in the loop. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you tomorrow.